We do simulate weather in terms of, um, mainly in terms of temperature because that's, for example, in Formula E, very important to get the energy management for the battery going. Uh, we do not simulate, for example, rain because in rain you never know how much it's going to be raining and the car behavior is changing quite dramatically depending on the amount of rain. Uh, the simulator is, although it looks constant, it's always evolving, it's always evolving. There's little things that are changing the feel of the driver uh, in terms of hardware. You just mentioned the sound system before. Uh, beyond the sound system, there's also very minor little things that, that, that will change the driver's feel and perception. So those are continuously upgraded. And beyond that, obviously the model is being evolved. So the, the mathematical representation of the car is being evolved week by week. We obviously also have, have tools that allow us to simulate the lab without a driver, but there's various aspects during the development, but also during the event preparation, where you need the driver input for various reasons. First of all, you need to, you want to adapt the car to the driving style of the driver. And on the other hand, you also want to get feedback of what a driver can handle or what the driver can sense. Otherwise, we could do the simulation without the driver, but this is exactly the feedback that we want to have. How is the driver reacting to a certain change? What does the driver feel? What can the driver handle during a lap? Because especially during Formula E, it's quite busy in the cockpit. It's not just you know accelerating and braking. There's various things that the driver needs to be doing, and we just need to know all the wishes that the engineers have. What can the driver actually accomplish throughout the lap? So the simulator helps the driver to prepare for a race weekend because as the driver then comes to the, to the racetrack, he knows the track, he knows the car, he knows the setup, and he knows the working procedures with his engineers for that upcoming event. So the way we're structuring uh, the, the facilities, obviously you have the simulator itself, then you have a control room for the simulator, but in the control room, we only want the engineers who are actually necessary to operate the simulator. And the entire other remaining engineering crew, we locate in here, and the engineers in here will find the very same working environment as they would find at the racetrack. So they also have a simulation of what they will get during a race weekend. And this is how we structure a session. Well, th this is the beauty of BMW Motorsport in general. Everything's very compact. So everything's literally around the corner. And uh, in case you need somebody from another department, you just walk 10 meters or whatever and, and you'll get him. Um, so in Formula E especially, Luckily, all the teams have now agreed to work together to become more efficient because it doesn't make sense for every team to build their own track because after all, they're all racing on the same track. So the way we do it is um, you commission a company that is scanning the track, laser scanning the track, and that's very accurate. Uh, the track is, is uh, captured uh, in a grid, which is five by five millimeter in horizontal plane and then the resolution of every single bump is 0.1 millimeter so very very accurate and from this raw data then you go away and you build what the driver sees so it's a two-step process one is the actual physical representation of the surface of the racetrack and then the rest is just what the driver needs to be seeing to get his cues where he's located around the track which is building and barriers and all the rest of it and those two compositions then create what's vis visible for the driver as the track and what's the physics which is required to drive the car on bumps and, and curbs and whatnot around the circuit. So we've on purpose designed the simulator to be able to not only take the Formula E chassis so we can swap the chassis, which is important to get the driver surrounding as close as possible to, for example, a DTM chassis. The conversion takes a couple of hours. So literally one day we can do Formula E, the next day we can do DTM. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty booked these days, the simulator, because uh, all the projects have a very high demand to get, get their drivers and their engineers working on the simulator. So what we do with the data after a session is actually pretty similar to what would happen after a real test session or a real race event. Uh, first of all, there's a debrief just regularly happening. And then on top of that, the data is obviously analyzed in, in very great detail. And since everything is digital, we have all the data we could think of and uh, not only analyze, for example, what the car is doing, but also, for example, analyze the driving style, the driving behavior, and all that together obviously helps us to evolve into the next session. So like our real Formula E car is a tech lab on wheels. We're also using uh, our simulator here as a tech lab. And uh, this tech lab allows us to evolve all parts of the entire chain from car development all the way down to event preparation. And uh, it makes us very efficient and hopefully very to the point.